you new this morning September is self-improvement month many of us make goals to improve our physical or mental health but what about focusing on your financial fitness a local financial professional Tony Drake from Drake and Associates joins us good morning Tony good morning how you doing I am doing great on this rainy morning. <laughs> yes, it is. Me too. Okay, so I want to do better, though, financially. What is uh, financial health? Why does it matter? I think a lot of people might not think about this. I sometimes jokingly say I'm really a sleep doctor. I help retirees and folks planning for that sleep a little bit better. But the numbers are pretty scary, Mike. About 80% of Americans are anxious about their financial situation, and about half have a hard time controlling their money-related stress. And if you think about worrying about finances, that can really become chronic stress that can affect your mental and physical health, and that definitely affects your sleep. So improving financial health can help alleviate those worries and set you up for success both now and down the road. Now, typically, financial health looks like a steady stream of income. A lot of people think about balances, but what people are really looking for is the income to pay their expenses, both the necessary and the fun stuff. And consistent spending habits and you know growing your savings are also really important things to consider. And those might feel out of reach for some, but establishing some really smart financial habits can help you get there. You just have to take it one step at a time. Okay, well, step one. Step one, there's really four habits I want folks to think about. And the first one is creating and sticking to a budget. That's not always fun, but it's really gonna help you keep track of your financial health. A budget or spending plan is really the key to achieving financial freedom because keeping track of your income and expenses will keep you accountable and help you prioritize your spending. Whether you use an app, there's some great ones out there, put a pen to paper, a written budget, is really gonna help you see the difference between your needs and wants. Okay, number two. Well, the second step you really want to think about is try to forget your bad money habits. Lifestyle inflation is real. This is something that can cause you to lose control of your spending and derail your savings if you're not careful. If your income increases, avoid the temptation to spend more on expensive things like electronics, clothing, whatever it might be. Put that money instead towards savings to boost your long-term wealth. You also need to watch out for impulse spending. It's another bad habit that can lead to unnecessary debt. Buying new stuff can kind of get you that boost of dop dopamine. It feels exciting, but those happy feelings tend to be fleeting, and, and those can really add up quickly. Yeah. Uh, the third habit is all about saving, though. Why, why do you need to work on that? It's really important to start saving early. A lot of folks, Mike, don't realize I, I have clients in retirement that are millionaires and that seems unreachable, but most of them are average every day, you know, kind of middle of America, just like you and I, but they prioritize savings early. Mm. This can also help with emergencies so you don't derail your process. You know, if you think about the pandemic, rising inflation, a lot of families dipped into those emergency savings. Nearly one in four don't have an emergency fund, and that can really send you off track when you when you think about your long-term savings. I really like to see folks have 10 to 15% of each paycheck in their 401k or some type of retirement account. If you can't save that much yet, just make sure you're at least saving enough to get the full company match. That's a free money coming from your company and you don't wanna pass up on that. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, what's the last step? Well, you really wanna set up yourself for financial success and you can do that by finding financial help and getting some education. There's great podcasts out there, lots of books, great fiduciary advisors, but find someone reliable and, and a reliable resource to really help you improve your financial literacy. Maybe you can ask a family or a friend, maybe you have somebody in your life that's really good at this topic and they can offer encouragement as you work towards these financial goals. Finances can feel complicated, so you really want to give yourself room to ask for help. If you have questions about your financial situation, find a professional that can help guide you. Change your habits and you could be in a good place financially, health, mental, all that, Tony. Good places to be. Yeah. Okay. Where do we go for more information? Drakeandassociates.net. Wonderful. Tony, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you.